Andreas Janssen's real life nickname is Mango. Feel free to use it. All right, Andreas Janssen, you are officially known as Andreas freaking Mango Janssen. Let's go. Woo! What's going on guys and welcome back to your Toronto Maple Leafs Cup or Bust franchise mode where here we have somewhat of a new look roster. I got a lot of love for getting Chris Kreider and it's actually working out pretty awesome right now. He's playing on the first line with Matthews and Marner and then we got the second line of Will Nye, JT and then Kasperi Kapanen. But speaking of Andreas Janssen, there has been multiple people in the comments that want me to put the lines like this this. They want me to go boom, they want me to go Andreas Janssen on the first line, and then Will Nye, and then Chris Kreider on the second line. There has been an overwhelming amount of support for Andreas Mango Janssen to be on the first line left wing. Now, I'm not opposed to it. However, we did our little tests earlier in the last video, and the first line addition of Chris Kreider actually helped quite a bit. So I'm not opposed to this. I'm going to try it out. There's a lot of love for the mango man in the comments so we will throw him on the first line now I'm a little bit concerned about Kasperi Kapanen because Kasperi Kapanen was actually a pretty big part of our team last year 53 points in 82 games he was a big piece on our second line so I don't really want to drop a 24 year old on the third line but again there's really no room to move anyone around I mean I can't really put Will Nye or Chris Kreider on the third line that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense so Kasperi Kapanen might take the back seat for a little while but I mean Andreas Janssen I see the hype in real life he's obviously fantastic he had 43 points 20 goals obviously going into the real NHL season 2019-2020 he's going to be looked at as a top six guy in our franchise mode I mean he did have 20 goals last year which was great he only has three points in 16 games this year so I'm not super sold on this however I will give it a shot you guys in the comments you seem to know what you're talking about so Andreas Mango Janssen is on the first line for now Charlie he makes a good point he says Adam Lowry has 94 face-offs make sure he's playing center on all your special teams I just went ahead and I made sure he's on there he's on the PK all that good stuff we need to be winning as many draws as we possibly can we have a good matchup here with the Tampa Bay Lightning we have basically identical records Andreas Mango Janssen on the first line he only has one goal this year let's see if playing with the big Big guns on line number one is going to spark him, see if that's going to get things going, period number one, and it's five to three, eight goals in the first period, okay, uh, Victor Hedman and Braden Point come out immediately, like less than 10 seconds apart they score, okay, and then Tavares and Marner score like a minute apart, and then Tavares gets another one 28 seconds later, and then Nick Baptiste comes through, and then Chris Kreider comes through, five straight unanswered goals, and then Nikita Kucherov uh, gets one. We have eight goals in the first period. Okay, period number two. Is it going to be just as crazy? Six to four. Johnny T gets another. Cedric Paquette gets one for them. This is the goalie's worst nightmare right now. Ten goals in the game. Make it 11. Zach Hyman scores on Vasilevsky. We are putting up numbers on a really good team. Closing it on 30 shots. Mitch Marner makes it eight to four. Oh my god, the boys are buzzing. Can we make it nine just for fun? Just for fun? Nope, that's all it's gonna be. We just double up on him, eight to four. What a wild night. Johnny T with a hat trick, Tyson Berry with four helpers, Chris Crowder with a goal and an assist. How did Mr. Mango do? The Mango Man, Andreas Janssen, playing on the first line. The team puts up eight goals and he doesn't get on the score sheet. Either is Morgan Riley though, but it's all good. We got the W, that's all that matters, eight to four. I was really not expecting that. So that's four straight wins. We are rolling here. Can we make it five against the Wings? Nice little original six matchup, and they destroy us five to two, and then we lose three to one. Come on, boys. Let's get back on the winning ways here. We win, and then we lose again. Uh, third and a seventh for, no, not having that. That's a big piece of our AHL team. What is going on here? Okay, we are struggling big time here. Uh, Van Riemsdyk for a third, so we basically have to give up a 
prospect for a pick in the exact same round in the exact same year. That's a very similar pick. No, thank you. Uh, we're losing quite a bit right now. Um, maybe moving Andreas Janssen down might be the best thing. I know the love for the Mango Man in the comments is real, but uh, we're losing. This month hasn't been that kind to us. Up against the Wings, we should beat them. They had a terrible record, and we do. They're 7 14 and 4. 14 11 and 1. Okay, it's not terrible. I mean, I'd love to go on like a four or five game winning streak here, really separate ourselves. That's a huge win there against the Montreal Canadiens. We're 15, 11, and 1. We got a good test here against Long Island. The return of Johnny T. They're still throwing stuff at him in Long Island. Oh my god. The poor guy. Hopefully he can come out and score a couple and shut up the crowd. Period number one. And it's 2-2. Alright. Johnny T gets one and Spezza. Anders Lee and Casey Sezikis get goals for them. Going into the second. Make it 4-2. Spezza gets two on the night. Austin Matthews gets another all right, we have a one goal lead here going into the third. They have a power play, a five on three, and they capitalize. Josh Bailey, he ties up the game. We have a power play. Come on, baby. Andres Janssen on the power play. Give me an Andres Janssen goal here. I think I might move him down. I mean, I'll have to look at his individual stats, but we're going into overtime. No, we're not, because Zach Hyman with 41 seconds left on the clock. He secures the extra points, and the boys continue the winning streak. All right, so maybe I won't move him down just yet. I think we've only won two straight. I don't know if that's technically a winning streak. Sorry, three straight. We've won five of our last seven games, which isn't terrible. We got games on back-to-back -back nights here. We travel from Long Island to Florida. That travel is going to be brutal. Hopefully the boys aren't too tired up against the Panthers and they lose 3-2. Apparently we just play every game on Friday, so no hockey night in Canada. Don Cherry gets the night off. The next hockey night in Canada game we have is not even in Canada. It's in, it's in New York, so that's not even going to count. When's the next hockey night in Canada game? Apparently the NHL hates the Leafs. That's something I thought I'd never say. We don't play on Saturday for the rest of the year. So no more Hockey Night in Canada. You hate to see it. I'm going to go up to this Bruins game here, and then we're going to see if Andreas Janssen should still be on the first line. There's another W, 4-2. A couple big losses there. You hate to see that. 17-13-12 and 17-10-3. and Boston versus Toronto. Just a classic. Going to be a good test here. 18-13-2 and looks a lot better than 18-14-2. Let's go. Period number one. And it's 2-1. to one. All right, Adam Lowry and Mitch Marner. The Rat gets a goal for them, period number two. Okay, okay, 5-3. Chris Kreider, Nick Baptiste, and Adam Lowry gets his second of the night. Pasta gets two in the second. Is Adam Lowry going to get the hat trick? Power play for them, a five on three. Not happening today, baby. That's Adam Lowry winning face-offs in the offensive zone. Not a big deal. Killing penalties like it's his day job. I guess it is kind of his day job. Chris Kreider gets his second of the night. I really like this Chris Kreider character. I think we made a really, really good move getting Chris Kreider. And then Mitch Marner makes it 7-3. to three. You see what I'm saying? Like, we can just light a team up, and then we can lose, like, 6-2 to two the next night. It's kind of strange. Uh, Kreider 2, Adam Lowry 2, Mitch Marner with 3. You love to see that. All right, 18, 13, and 2. We're in the middle of December here. This is where last year we really turned it on. Oh my god, Austin Matthews has 20 goals in 33 games. Is he going to hit 50 again? At this pace, he might hit 60. He might hit 70. We have a three point lead on the last wildcard team, which is obviously the Montreal Canadiens. So it's tight, but I think if we can kind of pull away here, we can really. We can really solidify ourselves as a legitimate playoff team maybe in January or February. I really don't want to be fighting late into the year. But Andreas Johnson still hasn't scored a goal on the first line. Like... I get it. You guys really like Andreas Janssen. You really do. But I think I'm going to go back to the way it was. I think we're going to go Kasperi Kapanen over here. We're going to go Chris Kreider right here. I think that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to do that. Every line has a plus one. I get it. You guys really like Andreas Janssen. Trust me. I feel it. He's a fan favorite. I don't hate the guy or anything, but... 
one goal in the last, I guess, 10, 15 games playing with Marner and Matthews. He actually hasn't even scored. He had a goal last time. So, I mean, that's just kind of unacceptable. Chris Kreider's got 13 and 9, so he's got 22 points in 33 games. That's awesome. He's been exactly as advertised. Uh, Will Nye, the hockey guy, he's doing great, 29 and 33. I kind of feel bad for him because he's been kind of up and down the lineup. He's been kind of kind of the guy that we just put wherever we want, but he's still producing, which is awesome. John Tavares is a minus six, which is concerning, but he's almost a point per game, 32. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen, he's got 18 points in 33 games. He's a minus eight, though. I think once we just keep our lines exactly how I want them, we're going to start to roll here. Uh, this is not changing. We're good. Timothy Liljegren's up to an 81. How's he doing in his rookie year? He's a minus five, which isn't great, but 11 points in 33 games. Uh, Travis Dermott, he's got eight points. He's a minus five as well. Tyson Berry's a plus nine, and Morgan Rowley's a plus nine. That's awesome. How about the bottom pair? guys here. Uh, they're plus one, Derek Forbort, the offensive machine, eight points in 33 games, and a plus four for Jordan Schmaltz. I'm happy with that. And then as for the attendees, Frederick Anderson's save percentage and goals against isn't great. He's 17 and 11, no shutouts on the year. Not like Frederick Anderson. Uh, and then Michael Neuverth has one win in seven games. So uh, he's actually one and two. So he's either come in in relief and got the loss or been pulled. So that's not great. We also have some players here in the AHL, like Timoshov, who's listed as a depth forward. Same thing with Jeremy Brocco. So they might be ready to go for next year or maybe jump up in the postseason if there's an injury. But let's go ahead and compare Chris Kreider to the guys that we were going to sign. Let's go ahead and compare them to uh, where are they I forget what team they're on I'm just gonna search for them if you go to player search you can just search for Hoffman that's right he's with Nashville and how is he doing for points so it looks like he's scoring a little bit more he's almost a point per game he's got 29 and 30 so he's definitely having a much better year than what he had in Florida might get back to the 70 point mark but I'm happy with Chris Kreider he's a big body I'm happy that we went with him and here's Tyler Toffoli on the Red Wings, 26 points in 31 games. So he's played less games, has a few more points. I'm not too worried about it. He's a minus five. I'm happy with Chris Kreider. Again, it's not all about the points. Now, I did see some comments asking where Jumbo Joe Thornton went. So let's have a look at that. Jumbo signed with the Vancouver Canucks, unbelievable. And he's having a fantastic year, 41 years old, and he's almost a point per game. You love to see that. Man, go Vancouver. If we don't win the cup this year, go Vancouver. I wanna see Jumbo get that ring and it wouldn't hurt for the Canucks to win as well. Now we do have a first round pick this year, which is pretty awesome. So let's have a look around the NHL. Obviously we're not gonna be picking in the top 10. Uh, there could be an option maybe to move up, uh, but here could be the first potential uh, pick this year. Lou Cunning, who's a defensive defenseman, 17 years old. All right, and then Braxton Anthony, also from the US development program. So one and two, sorry, one, two and three are all defensemen. That's crazy. All right. Now, this Trevor Wong guy, he was the guy who glitched out our franchise mode last time. Uh, Cole Sillinger, he was the guy from Saskatchewan. So there's a couple of familiar names here. We're probably... Oh, Chaika. All right. So there is some familiar names from our... Uh, from our previous franchise modes. Now we're probably gonna be picking around the 20 to 30 range. Since we're only doing a five year franchise mode, our next franchise mode, which I actually kinda have an announcement, uh, in our assistant GM group, they know what it is. I've kinda given them the heads up, but once we win a Stanley Cup here, hopefully it takes less than five years, we are going to move on to our new franchise mode, which is going to be I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It's an expansion team going into the Eastern Conference, and there's going to be around, let's say, 50, that's subject to change, 50 created players. So that's going to be fun. One for each team, and then a bunch in free agency. So the next franchise mode is going to be a blast. But I mentioned that because we're not really focusing on the draft that much, because obviously we're only here for five years. The year one and year two draft is pretty important. But aside from that, we really, really don't have a whole lot to do in the draft. We just basically want to win games, win the Stanley Cup, and move on. I want to bring the cup to Toronto. That's my main goal. And then we're out of here, all right? I want to do my work and get out. It's a really stressful job being at the helm of the Maple Leafs here, you know? It's, it's not easy. 
So we do have to re-sign Frederick Anderson this year. Now we have to make a choice. Is he going to be our guy we are going to roll with, hopefully winning the Stanley Cup with? Um, we can give him an extension right now. He, does, he doesn't even want an extension, so it might be a little bit difficult to sign him. Uh, we do have the money to do it. I might leave this up to you guys. Uh, 5.6 for two years. Is Freddie going to be our guy? Has he proved it? I mean, we got to the Eastern Conference Final last year. He was pretty damn good. I'm going to leave this one up to you guys, but let's go ahead and get some more simulation done. We're probably going to go all the way up, even past the trade deadline here. Um, we might even get the whole entire year done. Depending on if we get on a roll here or if we start to struggle, we might have to think about making a move. But I really want to solidify ourselves as a legitimate playoff team. Uh, Coach Reese Moore has started a new conversation concern. We are being scored on way too too often. You know what? I'm kind of agree with you. Um, let's see. I think you're on to something. What should we do, Mr. Reese Moore? What should we do? We need to upgrade our defensemen. Okay, so this is basically basically rinse and repeat from last year. We had this issue where I believe we had the exact same conversation around this time where we had to trade Jake Muzzin and we got Tory Krug. That, I mean, we made it to the Eastern Conference Final, but I would say it's probably a failure. Um, if I say if I say yes, I have to do something. I have to trade for another defenseman. If I persuade him, it, it's like a 50-50% chance he agrees or he disagrees. You may be right about this. Okay, hopefully the fans enjoy the higher scoring games. All right, Reese Moore. It actually worked out. The persuasion doesn't usually work out, so I'm actually glad that did. Honestly, though, I got to say, Reese Moore is one of the ugliest head coaches in the entire league. There you go, five to four win. The thing is, we get scored on a lot, but we can score goals. You see, we beat this, we beat the Hawks seven to six. We beat the Ducks five to four, and then we lose six four twice within a week, and we win six to two. Our team is all over the map here. We are just all over the map. Hopefully, we can go three games straight with a win, and there's a loss. 22-16-3. We have a playoff spot. It's not confirmed, but we do have a playoff position as of right now. As of January 3rd, we are in the playoffs. But... I kind of want to be dominant. I want to have like another 50 win year. I know we need to be a team that is going to go far in the postseason. Like, I feel like we're just on the bubble. We need to either make something happen and go on just a tear, kind of like we did last year. But let's go here up against Jumbo Joe Thornton. I'm going to think about this while we slow sim the game here. Period. Number one, Jumbo Joe facing his former team. And it's 3-2. to two. We are a first period team. We score a lot of goals in the first. Short-handed, Jason Spezza gets one. Tavares and Andreas Mango Janssen. Elias Pedersen and Tyler Myers score for the Canucks. Period number two. And it's 5-2. to two. We are all over the Vancouver Canucks. Kasperi Kapanen and Will Nye, the hockey guy. Sven Berchi gets one on Frederick Anderson. But you see what I'm saying? Like we can just destroy teams and then we'll go on and we'll get and then we'll lose a whole bunch. I just don't understand. Oh my god. I was talking about losing a whole bunch. We're allowing goals like crazy here. Ten minutes left. Oh my god. Jumbo Joe ties it up. Twelve goals in this game. What is with the scoring? Oh my god. We're out shooting them by ten. It's a six to six game. Make it a seven to six game game nick baptiste make it eight to six. Oh my god every game that we've slow simmed has been like eight to six seven to six seven to five eight to four like yeah we get scored on a lot and our coach is right but we can put up eight goals like it's not a big deal timothy lilliergren had four points four assists will nye had four kasperi kapanen had two he had five hits Oh my god. A game like that is what convinces me, and that's a pretty good team in Vancouver. That, you know, convinces me that we should not make a move. We should just continue on with how we're playing, but the thing but the thing is, is how we respond after that. 6-5 and then a 3-1 loss up against the wings. We win in a shootout and then we lose. So it's like you win-lose, you win-lose, you lose-lose, you win-win, you win-win-win, you lose-lose. It's kind of like we're taking two steps forward, one step backward. It's like we're making small steps, but nothing crazy. 
There's two losses. Now we should win against the Bruins if the simulation continues the way that it's been going over the last couple of months. Oh, we got a big trade here. Calgary gets Mark Edward Vlasic, a third, a fourth, Johan Larson for Jacob Peltier, a second, a fourth, and I guess another prospect. So that's a pretty big move. Calgary gets strong, and we lose seven to six against the Bruins. We're only three points above the Sabres right now. Like... We need to really step away here. We need to separate ourselves from everyone else. And how do we do that? Is it our goaltending? Is it Frederick Anderson? I have no concerns with our top four guys. Like our top four dudes, like Will Nye, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, and Austin Matthews. I have no concerns with those guys. We know they're gonna produce. Look at Chris Kreider as well, 34 and 48. That's awesome, I'm happy with that. 18 goals on the year. Tyson Berry, Morgan Rally, they're doing their thing. Kasperi Kapanen's a little bit slower than last year, but I think we kind of expected that. Spezza has 22. Uh, Adam Lowry's got 20. Timothy Liljegren's got 18. Again, like we're doing good. Everyone on paper seems to be doing all right. Is it our defense or our goaltending? Is it really Frederick Anderson? A 3-6-1 goals against average, like how does that compare against other starting goalies in the NHL? Like let's say he's similar to Marc-Andre Fleury, all right? So how's Marc-Andre Fleury? A 3.03 goals against, 9.08 save percentage. I mean, the save percentage of 891 is definitely concerning. Goal scoring is just up. A lot of goalies have not a great save percentage and a pretty high goals against average. Uh, Andreas Nilsson's actually doing really well, but he has a goals against average of 3.15. So maybe goal scoring is just up. Like, look at look at Varlamov, 3.48. Uh, Robin Lehner's having just a god-awful year. Um, Pekka Rene's doing really good. 2.9 goals against isn't super fantastic, but I would love to see that from Frederick Anderson. Carey Price, a 3.45. Yikes. Maybe goal scoring is just really up right now, and a lot of goalies have really bad save percentage and goals against average. Maybe it'll even out once the year. Oh my, poor Mike Smith, 365. Yikes, 366 for Markstrom, so maybe I'm freaking out a little bit too much here. The lowest goals against average for a starting goalie is 270 from Braden Holtby. So if you can, it's like, I just don't really know because I feel like we've solidified most of our positions and I feel like we have one of the stronger defense in the league. Is Timothy Liljegren maybe just too young? Like he's listed as a top four. Should I bring him up to the first pairing and move Morgan Riley down or move Tyson Berry down? I really don't know what to do. I don't really want to move around our forwards because everyone is a plus one. I like our lines right now. I think we're doing okay. Uh, if I move this here, okay, that really helps out. What if I move Timothy Lilligren with Morgan Riley and then put Travis Dermott with Tyson Berry? That gives it a plus three. You know what? Let's just try it, okay? Let's try it until we go up to the, um, to the trade deadline, which is going to be about another month. I really want to turn it on. I really want to separate ourselves from the uh, from the pack here. We'll go up to this Philadelphia Flyers game and then we'll see what's going on. Because I don't know. I feel like we just need to catch fire and then we're going to be gone. It kind of happened last year and there's a 10 to 2 win. 10 to 2, ladies and gentlemen. I make a line change, the boys win 10 to 2. Against the Canucks, oh my god, we've put up 18 goals in two games against Vancouver. That's insane. Tonight, the Maple Leafs demolished the Canucks 10-2. to uh, Let's see here. Adam Lowry had four points. That's awesome. And nothing else. So a four-point night from Adam Lowry. A 10-2 to win. Maybe moving Tyson Berry is all it takes. We'll slow send this game against the New York Rangers here. And then see what I mean? Like, we have a bye week after we win 10-2, to and then you lose 4-1. to I mean, it's a pretty good team there in Washington, but come on. All right, the Rangers are going to be a good test for us as well. They have a little bit of a better record than us. They have that extra overtime loss and less regulation losses. Let's go, period. Number one, the return of Chris Kreider to the Big Apple, and it's them getting on the board. Capo Caco scores on Frederick Anderson. The Finn scores on the Dane, period. Number two. All right, 3-2. We have a huge second period. Andreas Mango Janssen, Austin freaking Matthews, and Zach Hyman. All right, we have a one goal lead going into the third. This is where I need Frederick Anderson and Solomaki scores, of course. Of course, of course. Come on, Freddie. I need you here, buddy. I need our offense to step up. Eric Howla. 
Eric freaking Howla of all people. They score, making it 4-3. to three. Just as I talk about Anderson, he lets two goals in, and we don't get a single goal in the third. It's not over yet, 30 seconds, and it's all but over. That's a big two points we just lost right there. Like I said, it's how we respond to wins. You know, we just... We destroyed a team 10-2. to two. All right, we got a big trade here. To the Islanders, got a first and a prospect for Shazikas, Pelik, and Fattenberg. Uh, that's a really, really good trade for the Islanders. Okay. But we but we just destroyed a team 10-2, to two, and we've lost three straight. There you go. We get a win. All right, we get back in the winning ways. Another big trade here, Devin Dubnik back to Edmonton. All right, so Dubnik, where he started his career, um, or was he drafted by Edmonton? I think he was drafted by Edmonton, and then they like rushed him right into the NHL. I gotta check. Yeah, he was drafted first round, 14th overall. So things come full circle here for Devin Dubnik. He's maybe gonna finish his career where he ends it. Kyle Clifford on waivers. Is Kyle Clifford gonna be an improvement to what we have right now? He's big, he's tough, he's a grinder. Um, do we need Kyle Clifford? He has 12 points in 53 games. I mean, obviously he's not going to put up points. Um, wouldn't be a bad player. How does he fit on our roster right now? I think I'd rather Freddie Gauthier than Kyle Clifford, so I'm going to say no. Plus two years left at 1.8. When we're a cap team, we can't just take on extra cap just to sit in the minors. All right, big bounce back game here against the Washington Capitals. There you go, 4-3 shootout win. Jared Spurgeon and Eric Stahl go to Buffalo for two firsts. And Darcy Kemper. That's a blockbuster right there. So Buffalo, they're making moves. They're making big moves. And we've won four straight. There you go. Joshua Hosang to New Jersey for Pavel Zaka, Connor Carrick, and a second. Trades are happening. Things are happening right now. Okay, and we've quickly just won five games straight just like that boom five games straight kind of again taking one step forward again it's kind of taking two steps forward one step back but the buffalo sabers that's a huge move and they're in a playoff push with us as well aren't they they're pretty close to us uh yeah there are a few they're like they're eight points out so there's what i'm talking about that's the separation that i really really needed we have 66 points the next closest team is buffalo and montreal so we kind of separated ourselves. We're a couple points out from the Bruins. Maybe we don't have to make a move. That five game winning streak really saved our asses. That's a huge move actually, trading Jared Spurgeon. That's massive. Hopefully we can keep the winning streak alive here. There it is, that's six in a row, baby. Can we make it seven against Ottawa? Not on Hockey Night in Canada. All right, the simulation's taken a while, so maybe we got a big trade here. Uh, Jeremy Bracco for Ian Cole. No, thank you. Can we make it seven in a row? There it is. Seven games in a row we now have points in. Uh, Trevor Van Riemsdyk and Josh Manson to Boston for a first and a prospect. Okay. All right, this has been quite the uh, trade month here. Up against New Jersey, all of the trades are happening. Minnesota gets a first, a third, and a prospect for Kevin Fiala. That's another win, but another trade. New Jersey gets Derek Stepan for a first. They also got Nicholas Jalmerson, and the New Jersey Devils fired their head coach. All right, so, oh my God, we are winning games left and right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games straight. The boys are buzzing. We're 9-0-1, and just like that, we're tied with the Boston Bruins for first place. You see what I'm saying? I knew we had it in us. I knew we had it. I knew there was just that time where we were going to catch fire, and it was going to be all over with. I knew it. I've been saying it for the last 10 minutes. We just need to catch fire, and we definitely do that, making it 9 straight. Now... It would be fantastic. Oh my god, another move. Detroit gets Nick Bugstad for a second, a third, and Luke Lindenning. It would be fantastic to make it 10 games in a row on home ice against Tyler Toffoli and the Detroit Red Wings. Let's go, baby. Period. Number one. Looking for 10 straight, and the boys come out buzzing. Austin Matthews, Zach Hyman, and Tyson Berry. Dylan Larkin gets one on Freddie A. Period. Number two. Oh boy, lots of goals happening here. Five to two. Foley gets a goal in the second, but Timothy Lilligren and Mitch Marner continue the 
the slaughter. The goals are coming fast. They're coming often. Oh, Philip Zadina gets one on Freddie A. That's okay. I feel confident here that Frederick Anderson's going to shut the door in the last six minutes. Nothing's going to happen. He's a brick wall between the pipes. Oh, baby. Maybe an empty netter for fun? Maybe? Nope, it's going to stick 5-3, to three, but that is a 10-game winning streak for your Toronto Maple Leafs. Can we make it 11 against the San Jose Sharks? This is one of the craziest win streaks I've ever seen. 36, 22, and 4. I knew we had that extra level. Uh, New Jersey gets Hornquist and Patrick Sharp. <laughs> I just said Patrick Sharp. <laughs> what am I saying? New Jersey gets Schultz and Hornquist for Robin Lehner, Jesper Boquist, and Trevor Boyd. So Jesper Boquist is a pretty good prospect, and Robin Lehner is a definite starting goalie, even though he was having a terrible year in New Jersey. And they just fired their coach. So big things are happening in New Jersey. Big things. Um, a second for Jay Bullmeister. No, thank you. Can we make it 11? Oh my. Can we get past a couple days without a big trade? Nikita Zaitsev and Michael Stone for a first and a second? Okay. Interesting. Can we make it 11? No, they snap the winning streak. That's all right. That's an insane win streak, though. 10 games straight with a W. And let's go ahead and slow sim the last game of this episode. And it's up against a very good opponent. The Philadelphia Flyers are 36 and 17 or something. Let's go. Period number one. And it's 1 0 for them. Oscar Limbaum, period number two. All right, still 1 0. Still 1 0. Guys, oh my god, Matt Niskanen makes it 2 nothing. But can we come back here as a power play? Oh boy, Nolan Patrick makes it 3 nothing. Our 10-game losing streak maybe tired us out a little bit. This is going to be back-to-back -back losses. We get shut out by the Philadelphia Flyers, the team that beat us in the Eastern Conference Final last year and then lost to the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup Final. So we got tooled by a really good team there, but we did just win 10 straight, which is awesome. Going up to the trade deadline here, 76 points for Austin Matthews. We are in a playoff spot, and we are going to be a playoff team. The question is, do we make a move for the postseason? If so, what is that move going to be? Let's have a look at individual stats and you guys can let me know. We have four players that have 60 or more points and shout out to William Nylander, man. 67 points, over a point per game, almost as much as Johnny T. That's unbelievable. Uh, but shout out Austin Matthews, just miles ahead of everyone else. The guy is just a god. Uh, Morgan Riley with 52 points, that's awesome. Tyson Berry with 46. Chris Kreider with 20 goals. 43 points. This is exactly what I wanted from Chris Kreider. This is exactly what I wanted. He's going to get 25, 27 goals, maybe 55 points on the second line or the first line. He's been kind of pushed up and down, but that's exactly what I signed Chris Kreider for. I'm pumped on that. Kasperi Kapanen, 38. Zach Hyman, 35. Spezza with 30 as a 37-year-old. Adam Lowry, 27. So everyone's doing pretty damn good right now. Uh, Timothy Lilligren's now a plus five, which is good to see. Andre Janssen, only 20 points, but again, he's been kind of pushed up and down the lineup there. Uh, having a look at Frederick Anderson here, no shutouts on the year. He's moved his goals against average a little bit down, but 340 isn't great. Michael Neuvers, 2-5, and five, isn't fantastic either. I'm a little bit concerned about Freddie, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, he's leading the league in wins. As long as we're getting it done, I shouldn't worry about individual stats too, too much. Alex Nylander and Kirby Doc, the Chicago duo, ripping it up there. The race for the Calder Trophy. Unless there's an insane rookie goalie, the Calder Trophy should go to one of those two, and it looks like it's going to happen. So that's kind of cool. Uh, going into the entire league here, Dylan Strom is leading the league in scoring. What? Um, <laughs> he has 80 assists. Are you joking me? Who's he playing with? Patrick Kane and who? I gotta look at the Hawks here. Oh my god, that was I was not expecting to see Dylan Strom up there. What the hell? I guess Kane and Debrinkat. Patrick Kane has 58 goals. Are you joking me? Oh my god. Okay, so watch out for the Hawks. This guy's gonna have like 125 points. Oh my god. Thanks. 
Thank you very much, Arizona. Uh, Brad Marchand, 89 points. Pasta, 86. There's the best line in hockey. Uh, Claude Giroux, Mark Stone, Tyler Sagan, Nikita Kucherov. So all guys that we're used to seeing up here. Austin Matthews there right in the mix. Jonathan Marcheseau with 75. Jack Eichel, Radulov. Just trying to see if there's anyone that's really not supposed to be up here like Dylan Strom. Uh, Capocacco, there you go. Ripping it up. Voracek, Carlson, so Carlson's the best D-man out there. Joe Pavelski, Yanni Gord with 69 points. All right, so the points are flowing this year. And here's Jack Hughes, just for you guys who care about the young players up in the NHL. He has 50 points in 61 games, up to an 88 overall at 19 years old. I've noticed this year for F... I've noticed this year for NHL 20 that players really get good really, really fast. 19 years old at 88 overall. Like, what's Capocacco's overall? He's got more points than Hughes, so, I mean, he probably should be up there in the 87, 88 overall. Let's see what he is. Yeah, Kako's 88, so 19, 20-year-olds at 88 overall. That's just crazy. Just for fun at the end of the video, let's see if there's any offers for our big guys. Anyone for Austin Matthews? Ooh, we can send Austin Matthews home. Bring Oliver Ekwin Larson in. That's a terrible deal. Uh, oh my god, you guys think that's... <laughs> what an embarrassing offer. Eric Gustafson, Alex Ivalo, and Ilya Kovachuk for Austin Matthews? LA, are you drunk? And then, <laughs> and then Ottawa tries to send us Tory Krug for Austin Matthews. Imagine. What a time. We actually have a few offers here for Morgan Riley, Landeskog, some picks, and Ian Cole. Matt Barzell for Morgan Riley. That's a big move. And then Tory Krug for Morgan Riley, because that makes sense. This is actually kind of fun. Let's see about Johnny T. It's probably going to be like the same offers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exact same offers for Austin Matthews. And then the exact same ones for Mitch Marner as well. We got Anthony Mantha, a second, Patrick Nemeth, and a third for Will Nye, the hockey guy, and then the LA Kings with their drunk offer. Look at Timothy Liljegren, though. He's up to an 83 overall. So that was the right move to play him in the NHL this year. Obviously play him top four minutes. We're actually playing top two minutes right now with Morgan Riley since we put Tyson Berry down. Uh, two trades for Timothy Liljegren. Sergachev. Okay, that's a big move. Sergachev's got 24. He's a minus five. He is 86 overall, uh, but Timothy Liljegren has 24. So, I mean, yeah, I think mean, that's a huge win for us. No way I'm trading Timothy Liljegren. No way. Now, I didn't come here just to look at the top end guys. I came here to look at Frederick Anderson. Not saying we're going to trade him. In the next episode, we're potentially going to have to extend him or we can trade him. I mean, this is just throwing it out there after winning 10 games. I don't want to make a trade, but uh, let's see what's out there. A first and a second, not interested in that. Not interested in that either. Jalmerson, Hornquist, no. Derek Stepan, no. So it's really just shit offers for Frederick Anderson, and I think I kind of knew that. The thing is, I need a goalie in return, but you know what? I think I'm going to roll with Frederick Anderson. He leads the league and wins. I'm just a little bit concerned about our start, but I mean, just like last year, we started off slow and then we really picked it up. And even now, you know, we're we're eight we're eight two and zero in our last ten. We just won ten games straight. So I'm gonna leave it up to you. If you think there's any holes on our team that we should move, should we extend Frederick Anderson? I mean, we just got shit kicked by a team that we're definitely gonna eventually meet in the playoffs. And this could be another Eastern Conference final matchup here. So let me know what you guys think in the comments in the next video we are going to get the entire regular season done do a little recap here and then maybe make a move maybe 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 but we live in a world where dylan strome leads the league in points what a time to be alive i'll see you guys in the next one